Exclusive Contracted Novel by Felu Novel Network. Ming Emperor Chat Group. Zhu Qijin withdraws from the group at the beginning. Zhu Gaogui crossed over and became the fourth son of Zhu Di, bound to the Ming Dynasty's national transportation system. The stronger the Ming Dynasty becomes, the stronger Zhu Gaogui becomes, until he is immortal. Zhu Gaogui silently accumulated his strength and ascended to the throne to proclaim himself emperor during the Xingtong era of Feng Tian Jingnan. Chatting with Emperor Ming of Chuangda, Jun Yang. Integrating the Heavenly Dawn. Inviting all emperors to join your flock one after another. Zhu Yuanzhang. Old Si, why are you in the midst of the emperor's sheep? Zhu Di. Father, please listen to my explanation. No, Zhu Gaoqian, how did you become the emperor? Where is my great-grandson? Zhu Yuanzhang. All right, fourth. Your family is all good. You're stealing your nephew's throne, and your fourth son is directly stealing your nephew's throne. Upon seeing this, Zhu Gaoqian directly pulled Zhu Qijin into Junyang and presented his related videos. After watching the video, Zhu Yuanzhang broke the defense. Kick Zhu Qijin out of asterisk asterisk, he doesn't deserve it. Zhu Di was furious. Let me go to the Orthodox court. I want to kill this beast. Felu Novel Network reminds you that this novel and its characters are purely fictional. If there are any similarities, they are purely coincidental and should not be imitated. 01. Feng Tian Jingnan, Snatched the Throne of Zhu Qijin you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. 01. Feng Tian Jingnan, Snatched the Throne of Zhu Qijin. Shantian Prefecture. The Forbidden City Feng Tian Hall, in the eighth year of Tiancheng, was held on the third day of the second month, during the Grand Court meeting. All civil and military officials are present, and the atmosphere inside the hall is solemn and solemn. For the past eight years, Zhu Gaogui's wise image has long been deeply ingrained in people's hearts. Kowtow to my emperor, long live my emperor, long live my emperor. The sound of mountains roaring and tsunamis reached Zhu Gaogui's ears, making him feel a bit dazed for a moment. It has been several decades since I traveled to my mother's womb, and even eight years since I ascended to the position of the Supreme One. In the year of Yongle, Zhu Gaogui was granted the title of King of Qi and bound to a Ming Dynasty national transportation system, compiling the Great Dao Transportation Pilgrimage Emperor's Manual. The stronger the Great Ming, the stronger Zhu Gaogui, until eternal life and immortality, when the Great Road collapses and Zhu Gaogui endures. So to achieve immortality, the only way is to make Daiming stronger. During the Jiangwen period, Zhu Gaogui witnessed with his own eyes the old man Zhu Di's successful pacification of the heavens and his ascension to the throne. But Zhu Gaoqian was well aware that the throne did not have his own share. Therefore during this period, Zhu Gaogui did not act recklessly, but chose to hibernate. Zhu Gaogui lay low profile in the land of Chilu. After Zhu Qijin had an accident, he chose to pacify the emperor and successfully ascended to the throne. As a staunch supporter of Zhu Gaoji's rise to power, after bowing to the heavens, Yu Qian went out of class and reported, Your Majesty, the Tartars are rampant at the moment. Yu Qian was supposed to be executed by Zhu Qijin in the eighth year of the Jingtai reign, after the gate seizure incident, in front of the capital he swore to defend to the death. For a moment, the people of the world were filled with grief and tears, and the great Ming also lost his towering white jade pillar and the sea purple golden beam. Now under the leadership of Zhu Gaoqian, Yu Qian not only bounces around but also enjoys his trust. Under the rule of Zhu Gaogui, although only eight years had passed, the Ming court did a lot of things. Including but not limited to major events such as popularizing education, promoting food crops, financial reform, etc., and in these matters, Zhu Gaoqian had Yu Qian involved and played a crucial role. Upon receiving inquiries from his trusted subordinates, Zhu Gaogui nodded slightly and said, Don't worry. I have already made arrangements. The northern Tatars are nothing more than autumn grasshoppers and can be destroyed at any time. 
Nowadays, the Ming Dynasty has a peaceful sea and clear rivers, clear politics, and prosperous people. Although the policy was set by Zhu Gaoji, Yu Qian also played a crucial role in it. For Zhu Gaogui, it is possible to eliminate the northern Tartars at any time. The most important thing now is to improve the quality of the people of the Ming Dynasty and increase productivity. When it comes to productivity, what Zhu Gaoqian wants is not just the northern Mongolian border. Su Yuzhen, the left deputy imperial censor, quietly noticed the performance of the monarch and his subjects, his eyes flickering, indicating that he had another idea. In history, Su Yuzhen conspired with Shi Heng, Chao Jixiang, and others to launch the rebellion to seize the gate and restore Zhuqi town. This guy is shrewd and cunning, but he is still very talented. He has research in astronomy, geography, military strategy, water conservancy, yin and yang, and the five elements. At the right time, this guy was disliked by Emperor Jingtai for leading the southward migration. The position of the Guozijian sacrificial wine he sought was denied by Emperor Jingtai. Su Yuzhen, who enjoys power and is good at studying, thus harbored resentment towards Yu Qian, believing that he was being used as a meme. In the Tianqing dynasty, the same applies. Because he knew the urine nature of this product, Zhu Gaogui did not put much emphasis on it, but only asked him to handle the water affairs of all parties involved. So at this moment, Su Yuzhen was not only jealous of Yu Qian, but even harbored resentment towards Zhu Gaoqian in her heart. In his view, no matter how wise Zhu Gaogui is, there is no orthodoxy. Seizing the throne of one's own nephew and grandson is simply disrespectful, and people and gods are indignant. Of course, this is just an excuse that Su Yuzhen found for her bold ideas. At the end of the day, this guy is still greedy for power and wants to steal state power. At this moment he was calculating in his heart, planning how to bring Zhu Qijin back to power. Human nature is complex, and the human heart is difficult to fill. Drinking, lusting, wealth, and energy can lead to loss of soul and soul Zhu Gaoqian naturally knew that not dealing with Zhu Qijin would cause people's hearts to fluctuate. But these were intentional actions by him. As the saying goes, fighting with others brings endless joy. Zhu Gaoji's goal is to have these people with different thoughts come out, so that he can take action against these beetles himself, and avoid having to worry again and entangle with these people in the future. As for why not kill Su Yuzhen? Zhu Gaoqian has his own considerations regarding this. Not to mention the fact that Su Yuzhen had a talented reputation, he was simply executed without teaching him. Killing him for what Su Yuzhen did in history was not the act of a qualified monarch. A qualified monarch is capable of controlling everything, whether the officials are good or bad, they can be used for themselves. Of course, this is also because Zhu Gaogui was not worried about Su Yuzhen's attempt at restoration. He even looks forward to this day in his heart. So. I can legitimately kill Zhu Qijin myself subsequently, the emperor and his ministers discussed various matters and the court was dissolved. If there is something to attend to, report it, if there is nothing to attend to, leave the court. Accompanied by the sharp voice of the eunuch, the civil and military officials began to retreat in unison. Most courtiers are still in a state of confusion, and the Ming dynasty is changing day by day, making it increasingly difficult to understand as the civil and military officials step down, a sudden ding-dong sound came from Zhu Gaoding's ear. Host Daoyun Pilgrimage Emperor's scripture has arrived at the fifth level, activating the Daiming chat group. You are the first group member and also the group leader, and you will control the entire chat group. This group will be dedicated to making the heavenly brightness stronger. It will be used to strengthen and integrate the heavenly brightness. The group leader can perform various operations. Declaration The host is the group owner and has absolute rights to perform actions such as kicking, banning, and setting up group management. Hmm. Great Ming Emperor Group Chat Zhu Gaogui watched the changes in front of him and quickly accepted the setting. Although when I crossed over, I was still in my mother's womb. But his own soul comes from later generations, 
and Zhu Gaogui is familiar with chat groups. After some consideration, Zhu Gaoqian quickly understood. The chat group that appears in front of oneself is not that simple. It can not only serve as a chat group to gain many benefits, but also integrate the various heavens and the bright future. Just the latter point alone is enough for Zhu Gaoqian to attach importance to this thing. The self-cultivated, Great Dao Yun Pilgrimage Emperor's Manual, is bound to the national fortune of the Ming Dynasty, and was previously designated as the current Ming Dynasty. But with chat groups, it's a big difference. The fusion of the heavens and the bright will only bring more benefits to oneself. In other words, the Great Dao Yun Chao Xing Huang Jin Jing can also be bound to the Great Ming of all heavens. Just for now, as long as one dominates the world and develops technology, they can achieve immortality. If he were to rule over the heavens and the Great Ming, what would happen then would be beyond Zhu Gaogui's imagination. Compared to immortality, omniscience and omnipotence, what is power? With absolute strength, power is nothing but a companion. At this moment, the chat group received a prompt. May I ask the group leader, have you started inviting people to join the group? Invitation. Zhu Gaoqian did not hesitate. Anyway, it is parallel time and space, and no matter how much changes were made earlier, it could not affect himself. He was curious about which members were initially invited to this chat group. Invitation started, please wait. 02, Lao Si, this little brat, how did he become an emperor? You are listening at novel full dot audio. 02, Lao Si, this little brat, how did he become an emperor? Daming, in the 15th year of Hongwu, July. Ing Tianfu, Cunning Palace, Empress Dowager Cixiao of the Ming Dynasty, and the epitome of women in the world, Ma Xioying, lay on the hospital bed with a lingering aura. Since the burial of his obedient grandson Zhu Xiongying, Ma Xioying's body has been deteriorating day by day. Zhu Yuanzhang sat by the bed, his hands caressing Ma Xioying's face, his eyes filled with tenderness. At this moment, Zhu Yuanzhang is in a very bad state. On the first day of May, my obedient grandson passed away and only lived for eight years. Now my own sister also fell ill, and her illness spread far and wide. In just a few short months, she was already on the brink of death. Zhu Yuanzhang's hair was withered and his eyes turned red as he looked at Ma Xioying. He hoarsely murmured, We will expel the Tartars and restore Chinese orthodoxy. Why is heaven treating us like this? Good grandson May has gone, and your health is getting worse and worse, girl. As he spoke, Zhu Yuanzhang touched Ma Xioying's hand and said gloomily, it must be some imperial doctors who didn't treat the girl with care. If anything happens to you, we will definitely exterminate their nine clans. Heavy 8. Girl. Upon hearing Ma Xioying's call, Zhu Yuanzhang was startled and suddenly became more energetic. How are you? If there's anything you want us to do, let's go do it now. Ma Xioying struggled to pull out a smile and sighed, heavy eight. We know our body. What's up with the imperial physician again? We haven't gone yet, you're just like that. If we go, how can this court rest? After many years of marriage, Ma Xioying knew Zhu Yuanzhang very well. For the sake of the old Zhu family, Zhu Yuanzhang could do anything. I am still alive and can still hold on to Zhu Yuanzhang. If I had gone, I'm afraid no one would have been able to persuade Zhu Yuanzhang, and no one would have dared to stop him. Even if it's a label, it's not possible. Therefore, what Ma Xioying is most worried about is actually Zhu Yuanzhang. Just at this moment, Ma Xioying felt powerless. She felt like she had countless words she wanted to confide in, but they piled up in her heart, Unable to speak as she spoke, Ma Xioying's voice became even quieter. Heavy 8. You need to treat the courtiers and those around you well, so that the court can be stable. Don't blame the imperial doctors, they are all doing their best. Speaking of the end, Ma Xioying's face was pale, her eyes were blurred, only the concerned gaze remained unchanged. 
Looking at Ma Xioying's appearance, Zhu Yuanzhang's heart immediately rose to his throat. This emperor, who is invincible on the battlefield and dominates the court, only shows tenderness on his face. At this moment, he is not the founding emperor of the Ming dynasty, Zhu Yuanzhang, but the Zhu Chongba who first met Ma Xioying. Zhu Yuanzhang's tone was extremely gentle, and he whispered, Let's all rely on you, let's all rely on you. Sister, you are recovering from illness, and you still need to accompany us to watch the sign and rise to power. The words fell to the ground, but Ma Xioying didn't reply. She closed her eyes and fell asleep peacefully. Looking at Ma Xioying's frail appearance, Zhu Yuanzhang felt heartbroken and had nowhere to express his feelings. Although he was considered the emperor, he was powerless when his loved ones were seriously ill what are you, this emperor? With a restrained mind, Zhu Yuanzhang looked at the eunuch and palace made next to him, his eyes sharp, and he walked gently out of the hall. Upon receiving the call, the eunuchs and palace maids dared not neglect and eagerly followed the emperor out of the palace. Take good care of the empress, and report any situation to me as soon as possible. If anything goes wrong. Zhu Yuanzhang's eyes were full of sharpness as he scanned the entire room and said coldly, be careful of your skin. The majesty of the emperor is evident at this moment, and a oppressive atmosphere permeates outside the palace, making eunuchs and palace maids almost breathless. I know. I understand. Just as the eunuchs and palace maids were trembling and kneeling to kowtow, the sound of ding dong could be heard in Zhu Yuanzhang's ear. The chat group of Emperor Ming has been successfully established. The chat group owner, Emperor Tiancheng Zhu Gaogui, invites you to join the group chat. Do you want to join? Hmm. The Ming Emperor chat group Zhu Yuanzhang was uncertain and his eyes suddenly became sharp. He scanned the crowd and said, Did you hear anything? When the emperor asked questions, there was no end to it, causing a war between the eunuchs and palace maids present, and they dared not respond. After a while, the eunuch in charge of washing in cunning palace boldly said, Your Majesty, I have not heard any sound. Upon hearing the words, Zhu Yuanzhang was greatly disappointed and sighed in his heart. In recent days, first Hu Weiyong has been trying to rebel, then his obedient grandson has died early, and now Empress Ma has fallen ill a series of things pressed together really makes me feel exhausted. Now that he had hallucinations, Zhu Yuanzhang shook his head helplessly and was about to return to the palace to rest when suddenly a voice came from his ear again. The group leader, Tiancheng Emperor Zhu Gaogui, invites you to join the chat group of Emperor Ming. Do you want to join? If you refuse this time, you will completely lose the opportunity to join the chat group. This time. Not only sound, but also a golden light curtain appeared in front of Zhu Yuanzhang, displaying the content of the words above. There is such a miraculous thing. Zhu Yuanzhang quickly glanced at the people around him and saw that their faces were as usual. He knew that only he could see this thing. Is this the only chance? Zhu Yuanzhang dared not hesitate and immediately spoke up, join in. Unexpectedly, Zhu Yuanzhang saw hope. If he could find a way to save the girl during this process, that would be great. Are you sure you want to join and have successfully joined the chat group of Emperor Ming? The group nickname is Emperor Hangwu Zhu Yuanzhang. Soon, an interface identical to that of a software chat group later appeared in front of Zhu Yuanzhang. Zhu Yuanzhang glanced at the members of the group and found that besides himself, the Hanwu Emperor, the only one left was the group leader, Emperor Tiancheng. After confirming that only he could see the chat group, Zhu Yuanzhang quickly went to the Huagai Hall, ready to study this chat group. When he opened the chat group again, Zhu Yuanzhang was dumbfounded. A member he could never imagine appeared in front of him. Emperor Yongle. Zhu Di. At the same time, Daming, the eleventh year of Yongle. The martial arts tower of the Forbidden City, Zhu Di looked at the Forbidden City in his eyes and couldn't help but sigh. Not for anything else, because the second son at home is unwilling to go to the feudal domain, which makes me very headache. 
the second son Zhu Gaoxiu has military talent and he really likes it. But governing a country is not about fighting, and in this regard, the second in command clearly lacks the political wisdom of the leader. Although he does not like Zhu Gaoxiu's obesity, Zhu Di also has to admit that in terms of legitimacy and political wisdom, Zhu Gaoxi is more suitable than Zhu Gaoxiu. At this moment, Zhu Di, subconsciously, still did not want to face the cake he had painted for Zhu Gaoxiu during the Jingnan period. Not only is it inappropriate, but also for the stability of the Ming dynasty. Otherwise, if one cannot handle it well, it will recreate the chaos of the Tang dynasty. At this moment, Zhu Di's ear made a ding-dong sound, making him give a shiver. The chat group of Emperor Ming has been successfully established. 03, Zhu Di. Dad, don't hit. Don't fight. Listen to me. You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. 03, Zhu Di. Dad, don't hit. Don't fight. Listen to my explanation. The chat group of Emperor Ming has been successfully established. The chat group owner, Emperor Tiancheng Zhu Gaogui, invites you to join the group chat. Do you want to join? Emperor Tiancheng. Zhu Gaogui. Zhu Di whose eyes were round and hard to believe, like thunder. He scanned the surroundings and did not find any abnormalities. Guangxiao. Zhu Di was skeptical and looked at Yao Guangxiao beside him, saying, Did you hear anything unusual? Yao Guangxiao shook his head and smiled, saying, Your Majesty may be too tired. You need to rest well. There is a folk saying. Children and grandchildren have their own blessings, and your majesty should also take good care of them. Seeing that Yao Guangxiao guessed his own concern, Zhu Di was about to have a good conversation with Yao Guangxiao when the voice came from his ear again. The group leader, Tiancheng Emperor Zhu Gaogui, invites you to join the chat group of Emperor Ming. Do you want to join? If you refuse this time, you will completely lose the opportunity to join the chat group. It's not a hallucination. Not only that, but also a light curtain appeared in front of me. Zhu Di's heart was filled with turbulent waves, and he glanced at Yao Guangxiao, whose expression had changed significantly. Zhu Di dared not hesitate and said, Join in. What should we add? Although it was unclear what Zhu Di was up to, Yao Guangxiao also saw the meaning in Zhu Di's eyes and immediately said goodbye. Zhu Di happened to take advantage of the situation and parted ways with Yao Guangxiao to start researching this chat group. Why is it that Emperor Tiancheng Zhu Gaogui is the only one isn't Gaogui dead young? How could he still become an emperor? Where is my great-grandson Zhu Zhangji? Zhu Gaogui, this brat, did he snatch the position of my great-grandson? Zhu Di had too many questions in his heart, wanting to understand everything and what was going on. Daming, on the ninth day of the second month in the seventeenth year of Chongzhen. Zhu Yujian knelt alone in the temple, with white hair and a worried face. He was thin and weak, without any royal appearance. Taizu, Chengzu, the younger generation is unfilial. Zhu Yujian's eyes were bloodshot as he murmured to the portraits of Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di, yesterday, bandits captured Taiyuan Prefecture, which was only 500 kilometers away from the capital. Shantian Prefecture is in danger. What should you do to save the Ming Dynasty and change the situation of erosion? As Zhu Yujian spoke, his voice became quieter and he knew that Daiming had already rotted to the roots. Even if Taizu and Qingzu were alive, they may not be able to save the present. Daiming Dynasty, Your Majesty. Wang Chengen boldly walked into the Imperial Temple, holding food in his hand. You haven't slept or eaten for two days or nights. You'd better eat some. As Zhu Yujian's close companion, Wang Chengen witnessed with his own eyes Zhu Yujian's transformation from the spirited emperor 17 years ago to the aging old man he is now. It was precisely because of witnessing these things with his own eyes that Wang Chengen's heart became even more heartbroken and regretful. The emperor is such a wise and divine warrior. After ascending to the throne, he slept tirelessly, worked diligently, and worked frugally for the people, 
but now he has fallen to his current state all of this is because there are treacherous officials in the court who are unwilling to advance or retreat with the emperor. Regarding Wang Qingen's persuasion, Zhu Yujian seemed to have never heard of it and stared at the portraits of Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di, filled with hatred in his heart. Zhu Yujian hated himself, as well as the civil and military officials of the Manchu dynasty, and even more so, the Tartars and bandits. He was not unmoved by the idea of moving south, but he quickly vetoed it. At this time, moving south, isn't it a loss of face for the old Zhu family? The death of a ruler is the righteousness of the country. Zhu Yujian understood that it was impossible to make a final decision to move south, and Shantian Prefecture must guard it. As long as we stay behind, there will always be a way at this moment, a ding-dong sound came from Zhu Yujian's ear, just as Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di from two other time and space could hear. Tiancheng Emperor Zhu Gaoqian Zhu Yujian murmured, isn't this ancestor premature? Zhu Yujian couldn't figure it out, but the chat group in front of him was undoubtedly his life.saving straw. Praying to Emperor Taizu and Emperor Chengzu, the response was actually a Ming Dynasty emperor who should not have existed. This actually gave Zhu Yujian more thoughts in his heart. This ancestor must be different from ordinary people, otherwise how could he have such means? Yes, I will join. Behind Zhu Yujian, Wang Chengyan was stunned, feeling increasingly painful in his heart. The emperor fantasy has arisen, where is the heavenly sincerity emperor? It must be the ups and downs of these sons that have dealt a blow to the emperor's spirit, those damn treacherous courtiers. Wang Chengyan's doubts were uncertain, and Zhu Yujian was not clear. Even if he knew, he didn't care. Zhu Yujian looked at the interface in front of him, his heart filled with surprises. On the side of the group members, he saw two names that haunted him. Emperor Han Gu, Zhu Yuanzhang, and Emperor Yongle. Zhu Di. Emperor Taizu and Emperor Qingzu are also here, and the land of Daiming has been saved. At the moment Zhu Yu checked into the group, a golden announcement appeared in front of Zhu Yuanzhang, Zhu Di, and Zhu Yujian. Announcement this group is committed to the development of the Great Ming Dynasty, with each dynasty representing a different time and space. After completing the group task, rewards will be given based on contribution level. Please pay attention to the contribution list at the same time, the Heavenly Ming will integrate and open up world channels during this process. At each stage of integration, rewards will also be given based on the contribution of group members, the follow.up group will launch many functions, such as the emperor ranking list and other rankings. The top three on the list will receive a large number of rewards. The announcement was long, but Zhu Yujian read it quickly and quickly understood the content of the announcement. The general meaning is that each member of the group is in a different time and space, and one of the important goals of the chat group is to integrate the heavens and the bright future. And in this process, group members can gain many benefits. No wonder there was a Ming emperor who had never appeared before, as everything turned out to be parallel in time and space. Daiming Jiangshan is saved. Zhu Yujian was overjoyed. With Taizu and Qingzu present, what's the point of having so many adventurers? Wang Chengyan heard Zhu Yujian's joyful words, his face conflicted, and he hesitated to speak. Finally, he thought for a moment and did not disturb Zhu Yujian. Perhaps the emperor saw two saints. As a servant, it's better not to disturb the emperor. At the same time, Tiancheng Dynasty. Zhu Gaogui couldn't help but nod as he watched the announcement automatically sent out by the group. The invitation for group members has been completed. Do you want to start the first group meeting? Open. Location. Tiancheng Chaohua Gaijian, group meeting is currently underway. Did you actually invite the old man and father to my dynasty? Zhu Gaogui rubbed his chin and murmured, that's good. It's also good for these two to see my Huagai Hall. At the same time, the three emperors of Hanguo, Yongle, and Chongzhen received an invitation. The group leader, Tiancheng Emperor Zhu Gaogui, has opened a group meeting. Do you want to attend? 
Join. The three emperors who are currently studying group functions and have not yet spoken responded. The words fell to the ground, and a golden light enveloped the three emperors. They only felt a flower in front of them, as the stars moved around. Opening your eyes again, you have arrived at a new boundary. Is this the Huagai Hall? Zhu Yuanzhang looked around at the surroundings, his eyes fixed on the people next to him, and suddenly became sharp. You brat. When Zhu Yuanzhang saw Zhu Di, he bullied him and grabbed him, kicking him hard. You really took the throne, he said Zhu Di hugged his head and crouched down to defend himself. Dad. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Listen to my explanation. 04, Zhu Yuanzhang was furious. What, Zhu Di, you rabbit. You are listening at novel full dot audio. 04, Zhu Yuanzhang was furious. What, Zhu Di, you brat stole the throne from your nephew. Explain. Zhu Yuanzhang sneered, we don't want to hear you explain. This is the chat group of the Ming emperors. If you can become an emperor, you must be rebelling. Zhu Yuanzhang punched and kicked, but he didn't leave any hand when he hit, and Zhu Di screamed loudly. Is Zhu Di, who was able to use the power of a single prefecture in Beiping to confront the entire Ming court and successfully pacify the rebellion, a simple figure. Not to mention that in the eighth year of Yongle, Zhu Di led a 500,000 strong army to penetrate the northern desert and personally attack the Tatars, causing the Arutai tribe to scatter and spread their reputation far and wide. At this time, Zhu Di had already undergone a transformation, and as the king of a country, he naturally exuded a sense of majesty. But when facing Zhu Yuanzhang, Zhu Di's temper, arrogance, and authority all converged. Just like in the past, just like the king of Yan in Beiping, he was submissive when facing Zhu Yuanzhang. Although it was parallel time and space, Zhu Di still couldn't help feeling scared when facing Zhu Yuanzhang. After the success of Jingnan, Zhu Di made great progress in order to straighten his back when facing his father below the Nine Springs. I didn't expect this scene unexpectedly arrived early, and Zhu Di didn't know what to do for a moment. What kind of ghosts and monsters has Zhu Yuanzhang never seen before, from a mud-legged person to the position of the Nine Five Supreme? After calming down a bit, Zhu Yuanzhang realized that the situation was not right the group leader is Zhu Gaoqian, and the other emperor is Zhu Yujian. This indicates that no matter which world it is, the Biao lineage has not been able to ascend to the throne. If Biao heir is present, how dare the fourth son rebel? This brat's abilities are basically taught by Zhu Biao and it is well known that Biao er was a benevolent figure in the Ming dynasty. If Biao were you, Lao Si would not dare to rebel unless what happened to Biao Er. Thinking of this, Zhu Yuanzhang took a deep breath, emitting a chilly and oppressive atmosphere throughout the hall. Daiming is saved. Taizu and Chengzu are both here, what problem can't be solved? At this moment, Zhu Yujian was already in a state of ecstasy. Seeing Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di, he realized the strength of this chat group. Feeling the change in atmosphere, Zhu Yujian wanted to speak up and explain for Zhu Di, but did not wait for him to speak up. Sitting in the upper position, Zhu Gaogui had already spoken, Grandpa, I am Zhu Gaogui, the fourth son of my father. Your place is the Huagai Hall of the Tiancheng Dynasty. I am the seventh emperor of the Ming Dynasty, and my father Zhu Di is the third emperor of the Ming Dynasty. Later, Zhu Gaogui pointed to the haggard and emaciated Zhu Yujian and said, This is the sixteenth emperor of the Ming dynasty, Emperor Chongzhen Zhu Yujian. What the hell? Zhu Yuanzhang was a bit confused at the moment, as if there was a lump of paste in his mind. Lao Si is the third emperor, which indicates that there is still an emperor in transition between us and this brat. Perhaps it's because Biao Er didn't have an accident, it's because of his brothers and brothers. That's not right. Zhu Di, this brat, is the fourth. What about the second and third? And this Zhu Gaogui why can the fourth son also succeed to the throne? What did Zhu Gaoji, Zhu Di, this little brat, do? 
the legitimacy inherited by the eldest son has been completely abandoned by this brat. Not only was Zhu Yuanzhang a bit vague, but at this moment Zhu Di was also a bit confused. As he had previously thought, didn't his fourth son die young? How could you still become an emperor here, what about my great-grandson Zhangji? How could you inherit the throne? Zhu Di was being grabbed by Zhu Yuanzhang's ear, but at this moment, he stared fixedly at Zhu Gaogui and said, Did you snatch Zhangji's throne, fourth master? As Zhu Di spoke up, the scene immediately became chaotic. Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di were confused, and Zhu Yujian was also confused. First, explain to us why you became the emperor. Before Zhu Di could continue speaking, Zhu Yuanzhang took Zhu Di's ear and sat down on the side. Come on, come on, explain clearly how you little brat became the emperor. Dad. Seeing that the method of diverting attention had failed, Zhu Di said with a bitter face, I really can't blame the child. It's really. Zhu Yunwen was pushing too hard. Yunwen had never seen the suffering of the world and believed in the words of corrupt scholars. After ascending the throne, he began to reduce his fiefdoms. Within a few short years, his fifth younger brother was exiled to the border region of Yunnan, his twelfth younger brother was forced to self-immolate and die. The other younger brothers also came to a tragic end. Even my son was under surveillance and strict guard by Yunwen's people. If it weren't for my son's intelligence, being exposed to hot weather and pretending to be crazy and foolish in cold weather. Finally, it was his preparation to take action against my son that led to his uprising and pacification. After all, it was your father who said, there are no upright officials in the court, and there is evil within. We must train our soldiers to punish them in order to clear the evil on the side of the emperor. This is also an impossible solution for our son. At this point, Zhu Di paused for a moment before continuing, my son also knows that you have high expectations for me and hope that I will become a pillar of the Ming dynasty. At first, my son did think so and didn't want to harm Yunwen's life, but when he arrived at Ingtian Mansion, a big fire broke out in the forbidden city of Ingtian Prefecture, and Yunwen also went missing. His son had no way to become emperor. Upon hearing that Zhu Yunwen had reduced his fiefdom in the end, Zhu Yuanzhang was uncertain and uncertain. But when he heard Zhu Di say that Zhu Yunwen had gone missing, he sneered and said, I'm afraid Zhu Yunwen can't do without going missing. Can your soldiers allow a defeated emperor to exist? You're just lying to yourself, you little brat. Do you still want to lie to us? As he spoke, Zhu Yuanzhang kicked Zhu Di and cursed. We won't argue with you about how you became the emperor for now, your elder brother. Why is Zhu Yunwen the emperor? Zhu Yuanzhang had previously felt something was wrong, and now hearing Zhu Di's statement, his heart became even more urgent. Big brother. Big brother. Zhu Di hesitated to speak, feeling as if his throat was blocked by something, unable to speak. Seeing Zhu Di's reaction, Zhu Yuanzhang became increasingly uneasy and immediately shouted, Tell me, what exactly happened? As the founding emperor of the Ming dynasty, the majestic aura of Zhu Yuanzhang is truly beyond the capacity of ordinary people. Upon seeing this scene, Zhu Yujian was already dumbfounded and stood aside, unable to speak. Faced with inquiries, Zhu Di refused to speak up. Thinking about the pain his father had endured, this iron-blooded emperor couldn't bear to reveal those tragic facts at this moment. On the contrary, Zhu Gaogui didn't hesitate and took the lead by saying, Grandpa Huang, uncle. In the twenty-fifth year of the Hanwu reign, after inspecting Xi'an, Shangxi and responding to the Tianfu, he passed away due to the cold wind. What? When he heard the word death, Zhu Yuanzhang trembled all over, his body swayed and almost fell off the seat. Xiong Ying passed away early, Xiu Ying's sister is now seriously ill, and even Biao Er will die in the twenty-fifth year of Hongwu. What have we done to endure so much pain? 05. What? Our great Ming has already arrived during the Chongzhen dynasty. You are listening at novelfull.audio. 05. 
Wat. Has our Ming dynasty reached a critical juncture of life and death during the Chongzhen dynasty? Zhu Yuanzhang only felt the heavens and earth spinning, and pain began to spread from his heart, gradually spreading throughout his body. After a while, Zhu Yuanzhang stared blankly at Zhu Gaogui and murmured, Gaogui. Did we commit too many sins that made our family uneasy? No. Zhu Gaogui shook his head and said, Grandpa, you drive out the Tartars and restore the Chinese clothing and clothing. This is the industry of the thousand years. It is because of you that China has the essence and spirit. But why? The people around us have left us one by one. Zhu Yuanzhang's grief deepened as he thought of Empress Ma, who was seriously ill. Now that Sister Ma is also seriously ill, we are feeling haggard in our hearts. I didn't expect that Biaor would also die young. Upon hearing the three words Miss Ma, eerie silence fell within the main hall, and the sound of needles falling could be heard. Both Zhu Di and Zhu Yujian have a clear understanding of Ma Xioying's situation. But seeing Zhu Yuanzhang's previous reaction, they were too scared to reveal anything. Father, on your end. Which year is Hongwu from now? In July of the fifteenth year of the Hongwu reign. Upon hearing this year and month, Zhu Di and Zhu Yujian exchanged a glance and quickly lowered their heads. What's going on? Zhu Yuanzhang sensed something was wrong and almost blacked out before his eyes, fainting. But in his heart, he was thinking about Ma Xioying. He forced himself to look at Zhu Gaogui and said, Gaogui, what's wrong with our Ma sister? Faced with inquiries, Zhu Gaogui couldn't hide anything and slowly said, In August of the fifteenth year of Hongwu, Empress Xiaozi Gao Ma passed away due to illness. Thief, my goodness! Before Zhu Yuanzhang could finish speaking, his eyes turned black and he fainted. There was a sudden panic in the hall, and Zhu Di called out loudly, wanting to call for an imperial physician to treat Zhu Yuanzhang. Zhu Gaogui stopped Zhu Di and said calmly, Father, there's no need to worry. I can solve this matter. Looking at this unfamiliar but close son, Zhu Di was full of mixed flavors and all kinds of words stuck in his heart. But at this moment, it was obvious that Zhu Yuanzhang's body was more important. Zhu Di could only nod and say, Come on, tell me later how this land has come into your hands. This matter is not urgent, Zhu Gaogui shook his head and said, Father will know in the future that it is still important for Grandpa Huang's health at the moment. Okay, we'll do as you say. The words came to his ears, and Zhu Di did not dwell too much on this matter. Because he knew that Zhu Gaogui, as the leader of this chat group for the Ming Emperor, must have something extraordinary. Forcing at the moment may have the opposite effect. Instead of making things too bad, it's better to wait for my father Zhu Yuanzhang to wake up and ask together. As long as this chat group still exists, I will eventually figure out what happened. Hurry up and show me your skills. Upon hearing this, Zhu Gaogui's mind twitched slightly, but his face remained calm. Zhu Di's words may sound normal on the surface, but Zhu Gaoqian is well aware that this is a probe. His identity as the group leader clearly caught Zhu Di's attention. Regarding this, Zhu Gaoqian did not care. The existence of chat groups is originally intended to integrate the various heavens and the bright future showing some skills oneself can also better control the direction of chat groups. Integrating the heavens and the great Ming, there must be someone in power, and this person can only be themselves. Immediately after, Zhu Yujian, who was standing on the side in a daze, saw Zhu Gaoxian holding on to Fa Zhu, muttering words upon seeing this scene, Zhu Yujian frowned and couldn't help but mutter to himself, when has it been? This ancestor is still doing these god-talking things. But this chat group is also very supernatural. This ancestor is still the group leader. Do you really have immortal abilities? Zhu Yujian muttered, and the next second, the scene left him in a daze, with goosebumps all over his body. After living for decades and being an emperor for so many years, what scenes have you never seen before? 
but the current situation has directly reshaped Zhu Youjin's three perspectives I saw Zhu Gaozhang holding his hand and making a decision, with a misty aura emanating from his body. A pure white light with a hint of gold appeared and headed towards Zhu Yuanzhang. Zhu Yujian was stunned and muttered, This. Is this. Zhu Di was even more surprised and lost his voice. Gao Yan, what means are you using? Upon hearing this, Zhu Gaogui kept moving his hands and smiled slightly, saying, Some small moves are nothing to mention. Subsequently, Zhu Di and Zhu Yujian saw the spot of light falling on Zhu Yuanzhang, who quickly woke up. Even the two of them also saw that the wrinkles on Zhu Yuanzhang's face had dissipated slightly, and the white hair in his hair began to decrease. Due to nervousness, the two of them looked very carefully. Upon seeing this magical scene, Zhu Di and Zhu Yujian looked at Zhu Gaoqian with suspicion, their eyes almost falling to the ground. You call this a little trick. This is clearly the means of the immortal family. Zhu Di and Zhu Yujian roast in their hearts, and soon recovered as usual. Since there are magical objects like chat groups, it is normal for chat group owners to have more skills. More importantly, this indicates that in the future, they may also have this possibility. Compared to Zhu Di and Zhu Yujian, what was even more surprising at this time was Zhu Yuanzhang. After years of fighting in the country, coupled with the high dot intensity work after becoming emperor, Zhu Yuanzhang's body was somewhat ill. For example, his neck had become increasingly stiff after years of hard work and paperwork. Now this neck not only doesn't feel sore anymore, but even has a faint warmth surrounding it, which is very comfortable. Gao Yan, are you a fairy? Zhu Yuanzhang was very excited and looked at the spot on his body. He murmured, with this method, can you save our sister? I don't want to live forever, I just hope she can accompany us to slowly grow old. Zhu Yuanzhang, who begged for Ma Xioying, was not like an emperor, but more like a seed of deep affection. The strong emotions in his words were naturally noticed by Zhu Gaoqian. He smiled and said, This is nature. Previously, I was not capable enough to save others, but now that I have the ability, I will definitely help my family. As the words entered Zhu Di's ear, he immediately understood that these words were meant for him to hear, and his heart felt much more comfortable. My own son is a thoughtful person. Just now, Seeing Zhu Gaogui's methods, Zhu Di had a question in his heart, wanting to know if Zhu Gaogui had Empress Su to save him. Unexpectedly, before he could ask, Zhu Gaogui took the initiative to explain. Unfortunately, my Empress Miaoyan didn't come across a good time. Upon hearing Zhu Di's murmur, Zhu Gaogui smiled and said, Father, there's no need to worry. Now that the Ming Dynasty has such a magical tool as a chat group, there must be even more miraculous means in the future. That's right. Zhu Di clenched his fist and exclaimed excitedly, with the chat group, there will definitely be other magical methods. On the side, Zhu Yujian was also extremely excited. With such magical means from his ancestors, the Ming dynasty would never perish. Zhu Gaogui didn't take Zhu Di's next sentence and walked up to the imperial court. He took out a porcelain and jade vase and handed it to Zhu Yuanzhang, saying, Grandpa Huang, this is a tonifying pill refined by our grandson, which is beneficial to people. Taking it to Grandma Huang can alleviate symptoms. As for a complete cure, I can only wait until I go to the Hanwu dynasty and personally diagnose and treat it before I can cure it. Good, good. Zhu Yuanzhang exclaimed three times, excitedly taking the porcelain and jade vase, carefully holding it in his arms, and sighing, Our old Zhu family has a person like you, who is truly fortunate for three lives. As he spoke, Zhu Yuanzhang gave Zhu Di a fierce glare and said, Look at how tall you are, much stronger than your father who only wants to rebel. How did it get onto my head again? Zhu Di couldn't help but mutter, but in the face of his old man's scolding, he could only touch his nose and say nothing. Seeing Zhu Di's wrongdoing, Zhu Yuanzhang didn't bother much. He grabbed Zhu Gaogui's hand and said with a grin, Let's go, accompany us back to the Hanwu dynasty to meet your Empress Dowager. 
Zhu Gaogui nodded and smiled, Grandpa Huang has praised me, but there is no need for Grandpa Huang to be too anxious about this matter. At this time, the various time and space of the Ming dynasty exist independently. After you come to me, Grandpa Huang, your time and space will come to a standstill. It's good now, that's good. Zhu Yuanzhang touched the precious porcelain and jade vase in his arms and said with a chuckle, We still want to have a good conversation with you, Gao Yan. Seeing that Emperor Taizu had done something, Zhu Yujian knelt down on the ground with a loud thud, and Bang Bang began to kowtow. Zhu Yuanzhang suddenly realized that there was another person next to him. Zhu Di was even more surprised and said, What are you doing? Zhu Yujian, a descendant of Bu Xiao, has met Taizu, Qingzu, and Tian Chengzu. I beg these three ancestors to save me, Chongjin Daiming. What? What's wrong with this? Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di were greatly surprised. Could it be that the great Ming dynasty of Chongjin had already reached a critical stage of illness? P.S. New Book for Newcomers, Seeking Flowers, Reviews, and Monthly Tickets. Thank you, Big Shots. Bang bang bang, kowtow to the big shots. 06, Zhu Gaogui. In the seventeenth year of Chongjin. Chongjin 17. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. 06, Zhu Gaogui. In the seventeenth year of Chongjin. In the seventeenth year of the Chongjin reign, the great Ming dynasty passed away, and Zhu Yu was hanged from the coal mine. During the conversation, Zhu Yujin's tears flowed profusely. After Bang Bang kowtowed, his eyes were already red, making people feel heartbroken as they looked at him. Zhu Yuanzhang temporarily forgot about Zhu Di's seizure of his nephew's throne, walked slowly forward, helped Zhu Yujian up, and sighed, They are all members of our old Zhu family. What is there that cannot be solved? Our current Hanwu dynasty, although in the aftermath of years of war and in need of improvement, can still be considered as a stable people's livelihood. Not to mention that we have generals such as Su Tienda under our command. In our opinion, the matter of your Chongjin dynasty is easy to solve. Kowtow so hard, I believe you are also very anxious. Speak slowly and explain the situation clearly. Let's help you analyze and analyze. After speaking, Zhu Yuanzhang calmly glared at Zhu Di. Just now, Zhu Yujian's sentence, Cheng Zhu, was clearly heard by him. This kid is indeed bold and fearless. They are all people who are emperors, and Zhu Di naturally understands the meaning that comes with it. Zhu Di felt very wronged. I didn't even call myself Cheng Zhu. This is the bold one who dares to do such a thing. Upon receiving a hint from his gaze, Zhu Di immediately followed Zhu Yuanzhang's footsteps and spoke up, if there are any difficulties, just let me know. If what I expected is not bad, the situation there should be severe land consolidation, and officials are circling in their inherent interests, unwilling to make changes, right? Child, please explain the situation clearly first, and then we can provide you with advice and advice. Only then can we prescribe targeted medication, otherwise we will be at a loss. Land Merger Zhu Yujian was stunned upon hearing this sentence and did not speak immediately. He really didn't think too much about this situation. In his view, the Chongjin dynasty suffered frequent disasters and poor harvests of food. However, the mutual criticism and shirking of responsibility among the courtiers in the court, who did not take the matter seriously, led to further deterioration of the situation but now it's obviously not the time to think about these things. It's most important to explain everything to the three ancestors. Zhu Yujian, an unworthy descendant, informed the three ancestors. As he spoke, Zhu Yujian's knee softened again and he knelt down to Zhu Gaoqian and his three companions, saying sorrowfully, Since my grandson ascended the throne, I have been working diligently, striving to restore the decline of the Ming dynasty and achieve the great cause of rejuvenation. At the same time, I also set an example, worked diligently in politics, and reduced the use of palace support, keeping everything simple. However, the party struggle in the court was fierce, 
and the ministers had no intention of serving the country, only focusing on power and profit. In the first year of the Chongzhen reign, the two kings rebelled, in the second year of the Chongzhen reign, there was a rebellion in Shangxi, in the fifth year of the Chongzhen reign, the uprising began to spread. Until now, in the fifteenth year of the Chongzhen reign, the bandit Li Zicheng had captured Taiyuan Prefecture, only 500 kilometers away from Shantian Prefecture, and the capital was in imminent danger. During Zhu Youjin's confession, the true feelings were truly revealed, and the expression of regret and regret could never be put on. The content he said also made Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di tremble with fear, their brows furrowed. Natural disasters and man dot made calamities continue, uprisings spread everywhere, and ministers in the court only focus on competing for power and profit in Liaodong, there are even Tartars watching closely, which is truly a situation of internal and external troubles, already on the brink of life and death. But similarly, Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di also discovered the issue with Zhu Yujian. This younger generation, although they understand that being a civil servant is not a good thing, they have no idea how to solve the problem. Listening to his explanation, it's just itching through his boots the strategy of governing a country cannot be manipulated out of thin air. Only by going to the Chongzhen dynasty can one clearly understand how to solve these problems. Seeing the three ancestors silent, Zhu Yujian cowed out again and knocked on the floor with a thud. In today's Chongzhen and Ming dynasties, there is a severe drought in the north and frequent flooding in the south. Accompanied by these are locust plagues, epidemics, and great hunger. A while ago, the capital had already suffered from an epidemic, and the number of deaths in the capital is unknown. This situation has been going on for over a decade without any improvement. Even the prosperous areas of Jiangxi are plagued by floods every year. My grandson has almost issued self-punishment edicts every year, but the situation has not improved at all. He he, Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di were listening attentively when suddenly a burst of light laughter came from their ears, attracting their attention. At first glance, it was found that Zhu Gaogui couldn't help but laugh. The two of them knew that with Zhu Gaogui's abilities, there was absolutely no sense of ridicule, and the laughter should have a profound meaning. Zhu Di received a signal from Zhu Yuanzhang's gaze and immediately asked Zhu Gaogui, Gaogui, why are you laughing? Grandpa, father. Zhu Gaogui restrained his expression and arched his hand at the two of them, saying, as the leader of the group, I also have some understanding of the affairs of the Ming dynasty and even future generations. The disasters mentioned by the prosecutor are mostly caused by the arrival of the Little Ice Age, but more importantly, they are actually man-made disasters. Even. Even what? Even to the point of deception. Zhu Gaoqian gave a cold smile and asked Zhu Yujian, is Jiangxi plagued by annual disasters and unable to collect taxes in full? How do you know? Regarding Zhu Yujian's inquiry, Zhu Gaoqian ignored it and said coldly, as far as I know, during the Chongzhen period, there may have been waterlogging disasters in Jiangxi and other areas, but it definitely wasn't like this every year. That's. Zhu Yujian was still waiting to inquire, but Zhu Yuanzhang suddenly took the conversation and lowered the pressure inside the hall to the lowest level. What else can it be? It's just those corrupt scholars colluding with wealthy gentry and unscrupulous merchants, deceiving the upper and concealing the lower. Even these people dare to become local emperors. If anyone present knew the most about officials, gentry, and even unscrupulous merchants, it was none other than Zhu Yuanzhang. As an emperor, Zhu Yuanzhang naturally had a lot of research on the changes of dynasties. After studying, Zhu Yuanzhang found that the causes of dynastic changes were mostly initiated from the lowest level, but the profits were mostly from aristocratic families and gentry. Only oneself is truly from a first-level white body to the current position of the 95 Supreme Sovereign. It was precisely because he understood that Zhu Yuanzhang was very strict with his officials, after all, he inherited the officialdom left by the old Mongolian Yuan court. The root is rotten, and if not restrained, those corrupt scholars may have long been lawless. However, Zhu Yuanzhang was not surprised at all by what Zhu Yujian said, and even considered it very normal. 
because this involves human nature. What people pursue is always greater benefits. When interests are solidified, social classes are stable, and corruption is rampant, the dynasty will eventually come to an end. It is precisely because he understood these things that Zhu Yuanzhang showed a small peasant mentality, believing that it was also possible for future generations to enjoy the blessings of hundreds of years. Zhu Yuanzhang's thoughts flashed like lightning, but Zhu Yujian was stunned and forced to act on the spot, as if being slapped in the head. Upon careful consideration, it seems that everything is just as Taizu said. Actually, no wonder Zhu Yujian. He was not originally the successor to the emperor and had not received any imperial education. Having been fooled by people below for a long time, I have developed a suspicious personality. Now hearing Zhu Yuanzhang's words, Zhu Yujian woke up like a dream. The Ming he saw seemed to be very different from the real Ming. The bewildered appearance of Zhu Yujian fell into the eyes of Zhu Gaogui, who couldn't help but sigh in his heart. In Zhu Gaoqian's opinion, Zhu Yujian is still good, and there is no problem being a defender. But if Zhu Yujian wants to revitalize the Ming dynasty, his skills are far from enough. Zhu Gaoqian never expected that Zhu Yujian was already in the 17th year of the Chongzhen reign, and that year the great Ming dynasty had passed away after sighing for a moment, Zhu Gaogui said in a deep voice, in the 276th year of the reign of the Ming dynasty, he died in the 17th year of the Chongzhen reign, and you. Zhu Gaogui looked at Zhu Yujian and said in a faint voice, you will hang yourself on a crooked neck tree in Coal Mountain on March 19th. Upon hearing Zhu Gaogui's sigh, Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di suddenly felt their scalp explode and said in unison, how could this be? Upon hearing Zhu Gaoqian's exclamation, Zhu Yujian was even more bewildered and lost in thought. His mind was filled with Zhu Gaoqian's words. The great Ming dynasty perished in the 17th year of Chongzhen. This doesn't happen to be the year you're in. And in my own time and space, it was already the ninth day of the second month in the seventeenth year of Chongzhen, just over a month away from the sentence, self hanging on Coal Mountain. Even if I have already joined the chat group of the Ming Emperor and other divine tools, can I still not save the Ming Dynasty? 07. The True Internal Worries of Chongzhen Dynasty and Ming Dynasty, Zhu. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. 07. The real internal troubles of the Chongzhen dynasty and the Ming dynasty were forced by Zhu Yujian. Gao Gao, hurry up and tell me what exactly happened during the Chongzhen dynasty. Zhu Yuanzhang was very disappointed with Zhu Yujian's performance. He was uncertain about major events, and when there was a slight disturbance, he became happy and angry with his face. Such an emperor, not being manipulated by others, that is a strange thing. But thinking that this is a member of the old Zhu family, listening to his words and showing that he still speaks the past, I am too lazy to bother. The most important thing now is to understand the true reason why Chongzhen has reached such a level. Zhu Di frowned as he looked at Zhu Yujian and took Zhu Yuanzhang's words, saying, This child doesn't know where he's learning from. He speaks with a corrupt and Confucian aura, and doesn't even know where the core of the matter is, which is very annoying. According to later generations, the peak period of the Ming dynasty was attributed to Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di. These two individuals are the core figures who laid the foundation for the prosperity of the Ming dynasty, and naturally have many predictions about the situation at the end of the dynasty. Since Zhu Gaogui, as the leader of the imperial chat group, has a clear understanding of future affairs, it's better to ask Zhu Gaogui. In their cognition, although the contact time with Zhu Gaogui is still short. But the aura, demeanor, and quality it displays are not something that Zhu Yujian can compare with. So after Zhu Gaogui spoke up, the two of them quickly shifted their focus to Zhu Gaogui and wanted him to give a specific explanation. At this moment, Zhu Yujian was immersed in Zhu Gaoqian's words, as if he had never heard of Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di's words. Upon receiving the inquiry, Zhu Gaogui pondered for a moment before speaking, from a superficial perspective, the biggest internal threat of the Ming dynasty today is undoubtedly the intruder Li Zicheng. Upon seeing Zhu Gaoqian speak, 
Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di immediately raised their ears to listen, nodding repeatedly, clearly satisfied with Zhu Gaoqian's choice of speaking from simple to deep. This Li Zicheng should have been a post-station guard in Shangxi during the Ming Dynasty. In the second year of Chongzhen, Zhu Yujian chose to abolish the post station in order to save the court's expenses. The original intention was good, but compared to the entire Ming Dynasty, the cost savings from abolishing the post station were only a drop in the bucket. And these post soldiers without career positions, who have lost their livelihood, must not rebel. Among them, Li Zicheng is the most outstanding. In just over ten years, he took over a large area of the Ming Dynasty. Li Zicheng's army has been fighting for more than ten years and has been able to sweep across a large area of the country. I believe he must have some outstanding qualities. Zhu Yuanzhang pondered, but this Taiyuan prefecture is only a distance from Ming Tian. How could the Ming Dynasty be in danger? This question was actually noticed by Zhu Yuanzhang long ago, and now he just picked a suitable time to ask it. Upon hearing this, Zhu Gaogui touched his nose and glanced at Zhu Di, who was wandering beyond the heavens. He spoke up, in the first year of Yongle, his father issued an edict to designate Beiping Prefecture as Shantian Prefecture. In the fifth year of Yongle, Shantian Prefecture began to build the Forbidden City, and in the eighteenth year of Yongle, the capital was officially relocated to Shantian Prefecture. Zhu Yuanzhang instinctively glanced at Zhu Di and let out a grunt, which made Zhu Di very embarrassed. Although he has not yet moved his capital in his time and space, the matter of moving his capital was already agreed upon with Yao Guangxiao, and naturally cannot be changed. Although Zhu Yuanzhang was unhappy with Zhu Di's actions, he thought that even this brat could rebel and claim to be emperor, so moving the capital was not a bad thing. Even Zhu Yuanzhang himself is thinking of moving the capital at this moment. Moving the capital involves multiple aspects, both good and bad, and Zhu Yuanzhang naturally understood the profound meaning behind Zhu Di's actions. So this Huagai Hall is also the Huagai Hall of Shantian Prefecture. That's right. Zhu Gaogui nodded and said, The Huagai Hall of Shantian Prefecture was built by my father according to the layout of Emperor Yu in the forbidden city of Ingtian Prefecture. As the words fell into his ears, Zhu Yuanzhang glanced at Zhu Di and a slight smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. You, you little brat, have some conscience. Originally, Zhu Di was still secretly staring at Zhu Gaogui. Now that he had received praise from Zhu Yuanzhang, he felt as if he had eaten honey in his heart. My child has many court affairs, and they all follow my father's steps. Regarding Zhu Di's invitation for credit, Zhu Yuanzhang chose to ignore it, causing Zhu Di to once again fall into embarrassment. Zhu Yuanzhang looked at Zhu Gaoqian and urged, the external cause of the downfall of the Ming Dynasty was mainly due to encountering the Little Ice Age, which was. Zhu Gaogui explained the concept of the Little Ice Age and saw Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di nodding repeatedly before continuing, of course, the Little Ice Age was just a few factors. The more common reasons were nothing more than corruption among officials and gentry, severe land mergers, excessive clan size leading to excessive burden on the court, and class solidification leading to the lack of upward mobility for the people. The most serious ones were class solidification, severe corruption among officials, and intense land consolidation. These factors led to the lack of livelihood for the people of the Ming Dynasty. To put it bluntly, the people even had no food for the land because it belonged to the landlord's family. Zhu Yujian, who had already come to his senses, was once again stunned when he heard Zhu Gaoqian's words. In his consciousness, the inability of the people to survive was actually due to corrupt officials and natural disasters. Unexpectedly, it was due to severe land consolidation. Zhu Yujian is not unaware of the land acquisition, he just doesn't care. Because he believes that this is not a big deal, the real big deal is those civil officials who are unwilling to do things. Now that he heard Zhu Gaogui's words, he gradually realized that things seemed to be very different from what he had thought. In fact, this is the reason why the court has lost control over the grassroots. The emperor is superior, 
and how can he know the true situation among the people? Zhu Yujian was originally a mediocre person. Everything he knew was in front of him, and he could only know what was in front of him because after killing Wei Zhongxian, he did not cultivate a character of the same level, so he could only be blind. Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di witnessed Zhu Yujian's performance, and their evaluation of him took it to a new level. If an emperor doesn't even know why the people rebelled, then no matter how perfect he is, he is unqualified. Obviously, Zhu Yujian is the one who is unqualified. And Zhu Gaogui's explanation effectively illustrates the internal worries of the Ming dynasty. As for the specific situation, there is no need to delve into it. Both Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di understood that listening to the summary was enough. If we delve into it, it's possible that we can't finish it for three days and nights. At this moment, Zhu Yuanzhang nodded and said, the internal worries are like this. What about the external troubles? How did the great Ming dynasty of Chongzhen perish? 08. Wu Sangue surrendered and the Qing dynasty entered the border. Zhu Yuan. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. 08. Wu Sangue surrendered and the Qing dynasty entered the border. Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di were furious. In this way, Zhu Gaogui no longer elaborated on his internal worries and changed his tone. On March 19, the 17th year of the Chongzhen reign, after Zhu Yujian hanged himself in Maishan, the entire city of Beiping surrendered. At this time, even if the Ming dynasty was destroyed. As for the so dot called Southern Ming, let's not mention it. This situation had already been mentioned by Zhu Gaoqian earlier, and at this point, Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di sounded quite harsh. The death of the king and the state of the land, although Zhu Yujian's abilities are mediocre, at least he has a bit of backbone and is a seed of the old Zhu family. Seeing Zhu Yuanzhang and his companions nod slightly, Zhu Gaoqian continued, Li Zicheng has some skills in entering the Shantian prefecture. He ordered, those who dare to harm or plunder people and property will be killed without mercy. For a while, the Shantian prefecture was in good order, and the people lived normally, even the merchants were operating regularly. But in such a situation, changes have occurred since March 27. This change has also completely deprived Li Zicheng of the possibility of competing for the world. In front of the other three emperors of the Ming dynasty, Zhu Gaoqian analyzed the possibility of Li Zicheng's struggle for the world, and he was not at all embarrassed. This is because the descendants of the later generations did not become successful, and at this time, Zhu Gaoqian was able to speak out no matter how heavy the words were. At the moment when Zhu Yujian heard Nanming, he still had hope in his heart, but Zhu Gaoqian didn't mention it and pushed him to the bottom. At this moment, Zhu Gaoqian analyzed the possibility of Li Zicheng taking over the world in front of him, which made him feel both ashamed and ashamed. As the saying goes, a general who is incompetent will exhaust all three armies. In terms of governance, the same applies. Zhu Yujian knew that his ancestors were saying that he was not capable, so he immediately said nothing and shrugged his head, waiting for Zhu Gaogui's next words. Zhu Di didn't have as much thought as Zhu Yujian, so he immediately spoke frankly, Li Zicheng is from a post-station background, so he must have committed the same mistake as most grassroots rebels. That's right. Zhu Gao nodded and said, since the 27th day of the third month of the Chongzhen reign, Li Zicheng has been cracking down on wages in the capital, copying homes everywhere. This is too urgent, and people's hearts have not yet stabilized. If we act like this, this person cannot achieve great success. Zhu Yuanzhang pondered and said, Gao Qian, the reason you said this person is probably because something unexpected happened later. As Grandpa Huang said, Zhu Gaogui nodded and said, Li Zicheng's baked goods have led to the spread of terror in the capital, causing panic among people. Officials in the capital have even begun to look forward to the arrival of the Tartars to save them. Speaking of which, Zhu Gaoqian's voice became even colder. In the Mongol Yuan dynasty, there were unscrupulous merchants colluding with officials and oppressing the people. In the Chongzhen dynasty, there were also merchants colluding with the enemy and selling the country recklessly. 
After Zhu Yujian hanged himself, only a few of the so dot called Zhongzheng Zhongzheng Ying Chao Zhongzheng followed him to die for the country. Some even wanted to throw themselves into a well, but found the water too cold. After Li Zicheng entered the capital, these so dot called Zhongzheng emerged in their original form, which truly disgusted people. Upon hearing these words, Zhu Yujian's head lowered a bit, feeling ashamed and unable to resist. A few years ago, Zhongzheng Yingchao was proud of himself and believed that there was nothing in the world that he could not solve on his own. Unexpectedly, it was so funny. Any civil servant can be killed. Zhu Di sneered, I've been thinking about competing for power and profit all day, not doing anything serious. To gain more power, they're just thinking about how to benefit the Zhe family and how to gain greater benefits. In the Yongle dynasty, I had strict supervision over the officials. These guys, if you give them some color, they would dare to open a dying workshop. The gentry's monopoly on the power of the world is too severe, and the people hardly have a chance to stand out. Zhu Gaogue looked at Zhu Di calmly, and the following sentence was clearly meant to be heard by Zhu Yuanzhang. There are several layers of meaning in this statement. Firstly, it explains that he supported the policies of his father Zhu Yuanzhang, and also points out the unchanged pattern of China for thousands of years. That is, the aristocratic family and the gentry almost monopolized the power class of the entire dynasty, leading to the fundamental reasons for the chaos of the dynasty, which were basically similar. Moreover, Zhu Di's words have always secretly complained about the registered residence system set by the old man Zhu Yuanzhang, which has caused great trouble to the dynasties behind the Ming dynasty. Zhu Yuanzhang gave Zhu Di a meaningful glance, realizing how clever he was. He naturally understood Zhu Di's meaning. But at this moment, Zhu Yuanzhang was too lazy to argue with Zhu Di and kept this matter in his heart. He said to Zhu Gaoqian, the Hongwu dynasty inherited the corrupt officialdom of the Mongolian Yuan Old Court, and we have been very cautious about it, so we are extremely strict with officials. Unexpectedly, the Chongzhen dynasty still decayed to this point, which is just fate's will. At this moment, in dealing with the matter of civil officials, Hongwu, Yongla, and Tiancheng have reached a high degree of agreement. Officials who can handle affairs are naturally precious, but most of the people in the world are ordinary and vulgar. The only difference is that Zhu Gaogui has already started to reform in this matter. That is, to vigorously promote education popularization. After a brief conversation, Zhu Gaogui brought the topic back to the main topic and slowly said, Li Zicheng thought he could go to the world and was proud. But at this moment, something unexpected happened and completely buried him. What's going on? The speaker was Zhu Yujian. He couldn't believe that Li Zicheng had entered the capital, and who could threaten him? Tartars. Zhu Gaogui sneered, Li Zicheng repeatedly failed to surrender Wu Sangui, which led to a stone battle in April to suppress Wu Sangui. By April 22, Wu Sangui was gradually losing support, so he surrendered Tartar regent Dorgan. The Wu army and the Tartar army joined forces and defeated Li Zicheng, who fled to Xi'an. With the help of Wu Sangui, the Tartars entered the border in May and occupied the capital. From then on, the Tartars became the climate and began to plan to seize the world. What? Zhu Yujian was shocked, Wu Sutsuan surrendered to Jinnu. I asked him to resist Jinnu, but he joined Jinnu. At this moment, Zhu Yujian broke through his defenses to some extent, and also showed his unpredictable nature in dealing with things. He was filled with joy and anger, and was embarrassed to use it. Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di didn't pay attention to Zhu Yujian's words at this time, and their faces were very embarrassed. Surrender to the Tartars. Zhu Di's face twitched as he looked at Zhu Yujian and said, What kind of people are you using? How terrible! Faced with Zhu Di's rebuke, Zhu Yujian could only do it on his own and dared not take any action. He knowing people without words, facing ancestors without words. Zhu Yuanzhang glanced at Zhu Yujian and became even more disappointed with him. He said coldly, this Wu Sangui will be killed. Li Zicheng won the world, 
at least he was also a great Ming, but it was a great shame to let the Tartars win the world. I finally drove out the Mongol Yuan and restored the Chinese clothing, and even after the founding of the country, I always surrounded and suppressed the remnants of the Mongol Yuan in the north, in order to make future generations more stable. I didn't expect surprisingly, this Jianu Tartar managed to conquer the world. Jianu Tartars, their ancestors should be Jurchen. Not of our race, their hearts must be different. This Tartar has entered the border, and the people of the world have no rest days. Thinking of this, Zhu Yuanzhang hurriedly asked, did this Tartar treat the people well when he entered the border? Treat the people well. Upon hearing these four words, Zhu Gaogui chuckled and said, saying he's a beast insults the word beast. Dot. Zero 09, even a clear might is not as good as a beast. Slaughtering habits. You are listening at novel full dot audio. Zero 09, even a clear might is not as good as a beast. Slaughtering becomes a habit. It must be destroyed. Zhu Yuanzhang's inquiry was originally intended as a gentle exploration. Both he and Zhu Di deeply understand a truth, which is that when foreign tribes invade, the fate of the Chinese people is often not very good. But there is always a sense of luck in people's hearts, and Zhu Gaozhang's gloomy tone and cold vocabulary completely extinguished the slightest bit of luck in Zhu Yuanzhang's heart. Animals are not as good as what outrageous thing did this Tartar do when he entered the border, to make Zhu Gaogui use words so harshly. Zhu Di swallowed his saliva and couldn't help but feel nervous as he thought of the possibility in his mind. What has this Jianu Tartar done? To make Gao Yan so angry. Anger is not enough, Zhu Gaogui sneered. It's my true intention to slaughter this tribe completely. Zhu Gaogui expressed his inner thoughts and then continued, compared to the past chaos of the five barbarians and even the Mongolians, this might clearing Tartar can be said to be more than enough. Even more outrageous. Upon hearing this, Zhu Yuanzhang became increasingly uneasy as he thought about the possible fate of his own people. What exactly happened? Zhu Yuanzhang was skeptical and uncertain. Is it possible that this Manchu Tartar dared to take the risk of the world's great injustice and slaughter the people indiscriminately? It's not just a reckless act. Zhu Gaogui said coldly, these mites and Tartars have no idea what human nature is. On the tenth day of Yangzhou, after Miching occupied Yangzhou Prefecture, Duo Duo ordered the city to be slaughtered on the grounds of not obeying surrender. In these ten days, Yangzhou has transformed from a bustling city to a forest of ghosts and demons. The number of people slaughtered by mites is no less than 800,000. Upon hearing this number, the other three people present all had scalp numbness and couldn't believe it. What is the concept of 800,000 yuan? 2,000 people can make a small playground in the future rub shoulders. And 800,000 people are placed on a flat ground which is a quantity that cannot be seen at a glance. Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di fought for years, naturally aware of the enormous amount of data and deeply understanding the fate of the people under the iron hooves of war. In the past, this number often appeared in the Ming Dynasty's foreign wars and in the presence of other ethnic groups. At this moment, upon hearing this number, both of them were already with their hair and beard open. They wished they could personally descend to the Chongjin dynasty and eliminate the Mai Qin. Zhu Gaogui's words did not pause due to the surprise of the three people present. Jiading San Tu Li Qingdong, a subordinate of Li Zicheng, surrendered to Mai Qin and became the commander. In. Chief of Mai Qin Wu Song. This person is a cunning villain with a vicious nature. During several attempts to capture Jiading, he allowed his soldiers to slaughter him indiscriminately. For a moment, the wreckage of the people blocked the river and turned it into a river of blood. And this person's three massacres in Jiading killed no less than 100,000 people. Upon hearing this, Zhu Yujian was completely dumbfounded. This is not only a result of incompetence exhausting the three armies, but also causing great disasters to the entire dynasty and its people. Zhu Yujian has always believed in his own heart that he has done a good job. The dynasty is heading towards the end, 
and most officials are not good people and do not do anything. Now it seems that things are far from being like this. The saying, governing a great country is like cooking small dishes, is like thunder piercing through one's ears, but it is obvious that one has not fully understood its true meaning no one cared about Zhu Youjian's emotions, as Zhu Gaoqian's words continued. On the 81st day of Jiang Yin, Mai Qing attacked Jiang Yin, and the entire city of Jiang Yin was defended tenaciously under the leadership of historical figures Yan Yingyuan, Chen Mingyu, Feng Hodun, and others, for a total of 81 days. 81 days later, Jiang Yin city was destroyed, and Mai Qing ordered the city to be slaughtered. The entire city was destroyed, with only 53 people remaining to hide on temple towers and save their lives. In this battle, the casualties of the people of the Ming dynasty were no less than 170,000. Even the Ming dynasty had a strong and resolute spirit. These are loyal ministers of the Ming dynasty. Zhu decide, didn't they surrender? Will this Mai Qing also slaughter the city after people surrender? This has to be said about the methods used by Mai Qing. Zhu Gaogui took a pen and paper, wrote and painted on it, and after a while pointed to the portrait, he said, it's like the shape on this painting. After Mai Qing entered the border, he issued a shaving order. Leave your head but not your hair, leave your hair but not your head. The three people on site approached Zhu Gaogui as he began to paint, and looked at the money mouse tail braid on it, causing their eyebrows to furrow. Not for anything else, just for one word. Ugly. It's really ugly and unbearable to look at. Zhu Yujian was indignant and dissatisfied, how can one easily ruin one's physical and mental health as one's parents? After hearing Zhu Gaogui's explanation, Zhu Yuanzhang sneered repeatedly, this Mai Qing Tartar is not simple, there are experts inside. Forcibly shaving his hair is beneficial for strengthening Mai Qing's rule and making the people accept his policies. It's really impressive. Zhu Di looked at the portrait with disgust and continued, I believe these massacres were all driven by unwillingness to shave their hair and rise up to resist. And these failed examples have severely intimidated the subjects of the world. Grandpa Huang and father have such a sharp eye that they can easily reveal the truth at a glance, sighed Zhu Gaogui, in order to protect the ruling position of their own ethnic group, Mai Qing must not only prohibit the sinicization of their own ethnic group, but also demand that the Han ethnic group change their customs and dress appropriately through compulsory means, which is one of Mai Qing's means. And this method naturally sparked a lot of resistance, with most of the previous massacres being the result of resistance followed by city slaughter. As he spoke, Zhu Gaoqian changed his tone and continued to talk about the atrocities committed by Mai Qing after entering the border. The Gingyin Massacre, also known as the Guangzhou Massacre, was the result of the siege of Guangzhou by Mai Qing's Prince of Pingnan, Shang Kishi, and Prince of Jingnan, Gung Jimao. After the city was destroyed, Shang Kishi ordered a 12-day massacre of the residents inside the city. For a while, Guangzhou Prefecture was littered with corpses, and after the massacre, there were hardly any survivors in the city. This massacre alone was no less than 700,000. This is quite gratifying. Zhu Yuanzhang frowned. Was this person a general of the Ming dynasty before? Returning to Taizu. Zhu Yujian finally regained his senses and answered, this person should have been the deputy general of Guanglu Island. He has already surrendered to Jianlu. Listening to Jianlu's atrocities, Zhu Yujian understood that his own abilities were only that great. But fortunately, with three ancestors present, there is still a possibility of saving the Ming dynasty. Just wait for Tiancheng ancestor to finish speaking about the matter, and then he will express his demands. Zhu Yuanzhang silently wrote a note to Shang Kishi and Gung Jimao, and said to Zhu Gaoqian, Is there anything else? What evil has this Mai Qing done? Every word Zhu Gaogui said just now was like an arrow piercing through his heart, making the three people on sight extremely uncomfortable. And the reason why Zhu Yuanzhang asked Zhu Gaoqian to continue speaking was not only because he became a bit numb, but also because he began to memorize small notebooks in his heart. With this chat group, 
I believe these people can go to Chongjin dynasty. At that time, one by one, none of them can escape. Zhu Di sneered and said, these dog tartars have become the climate, there are quite a variety. After a cold snort, Zhu Di's gaze fell on Zhu Gaogui, clearly beginning to settle accounts in his heart. However, what Zhu Gaoqian said next directly ignited the anger of the three people present. 10. Zhu Yuanzhang was furious and wanted to take a sword to strike Zhu Yujian. You are listening at novelfull.audio. 10. Zhu Yuanzhang was furious and wanted to take a sword to strike Zhu Yujian. The Nanchang Prefecture Massacre, where the number of people slaughtered by Mai Qing far exceeded 200000. All the people in the city were slaughtered. After capturing the Chaozhou Prefecture, General Kakamo of Chaozhou also carried out inhumane slaughter, killing more than 100,000 soldiers and civilians. The Massacre of Datong a large dot scale massacre carried out by Mai Qing Dorgan, Ajaij, Nikan, Baoyuo, Shuosai, and others in Datong Prefecture, Shuazhou, Hunyuan County, and other places in Shangxi Province. The number of people involved in this massacre is unknown, but Datong and other places in Shangxi Province have 9 out of 10 houses. Entering Sichuan to slaughter Shu. For the crimes committed by Mai Qing, Zhu Gaogui can be said to remember them clearly. Speaking of this, he snorted coldly. After entering Sichuan, Mai Qing caused the people of Shu to suffer greatly, with almost all deaths and injuries, leaving no survivors. The most shameless thing is that Mi Qing pushed the culprit of this massacre onto Zhang Xianzhong's head. Although the latter was an uprising army, Shu was their base, so how could they possibly cause large dot scale slaughter here? After Mai Qing entered Sichuan, he indiscriminately slaughtered, causing a rampant epidemic. In the end, during the reign of Miqing, it was necessary to carry out the Huguang filling the river and migrate the people of Huguang in other areas to the Sichuan region. Because all the people here have been killed. During the migration, there were even wild beasts perching on the walls of Qingdu's capital, which was quite amusing. At this point, the Huagai Hall fell into a long silence, and a strange and oppressive atmosphere began to permeate the hall. These cities and numbers are all bloody narratives. Behind the cold numbers lies the tragedy of the people of the Ming dynasty, who were in a state of extreme heat and suffering. Although Zhu Yujian developed a suspicious and stubborn personality in the day after tomorrow, he always cared about the Ming dynasty in his heart. Now hearing the tragic events mentioned by Zhu Gaogui, his emotions were completely overwhelmed, and he collapsed on the ground, constantly kowtowing to the other three people and crying bitterly. The incompetence of the descendants led to such a tragic disaster for the people of the Ming dynasty, with heinous crimes. During his kowtow, Zhu Yujian broke his scalp, but as if he hadn't realized it, he kept kowtowing and saying, Yujian is guilty to the people of the Ming dynasty, to the royal family, and to the unfilial grandchildren. Please punish Taizu, Qingzu, and Tian Qingzu. Zhu Yujian's emotional breakdown was unexpected by Zhu Gaoqian. As the saying goes, in Zhu Gaoqian's view, Zhu Yujian's character is absolutely not bad, and he also leads by example, truly wanting to revitalize the Ming dynasty. But unfortunately, the ability is not enough. Just this evaluation alone is enough to explain why Zhu Yujian caused the Chongjin dynasty to quickly decay. To put it bluntly, no matter how deteriorating the situation in the Ming dynasty is, it's not something that Mitking Tartars can handle. The downfall of the Ming dynasty was more due to internal factors than external factors. The party struggle is at its peak, but Zhu Yujian, who has never been accustomed to imperial methods, is in power. He must have become suspicious and stubborn. From the information revealed by Zhu Yujian in tears just now, it is known that this late Ming dynasty emperor had never considered the people of the Ming dynasty from beginning to end. At this moment, the painful tears and tears were only realized by Zhu Yujian after Zhu Gaoqian spoke of these bloody massacres. It can only be said that Zhu Yujian was unlucky to meet the late Ming dynasty. If it were a stable period, this person would be more than enough to be a conservative ruler. 
Zhu Gaoqian did not have any intention of sympathizing with Zhu Yujian. Although the Ming dynasty was destroyed, most of it was due to accumulated problems over the years, which led to the collapse of the great building. But in the process of governance, Zhu Yujian made many decisions and became more or less accomplices to the downfall of the Ming dynasty. Accelerating the process of its downfall. You little kid. Zhu Yuanzhang pondered and paced before stopping in front of Zhu Yujian. He said with resentment, Look at your elegant appearance, I know you're sitting on a dragon chair, pretending to be blind when you open your eyes. Although we don't like the phrase the people are precious, the state is secondary, and the ruler is light, we still understand the truth behind it. As he spoke, Zhu Yuanzhang lifted Zhu Yujian with one hand and stared intently into his eyes, saying, Tell us, did you ever truly care about the living conditions of the people during your seventeen years as emperor? At this moment, Zhu Yujian seemed to have lost all his morale. When he came, he was originally disheveled, but now he is mostly white-headed. When Zhu Yuanzhang lifted it with one hand, Zhu Yujian did not respond. It was not until Zhu Yuanzhang asked that he felt powerless and ashamed, saying, I have never. You. Zhu Yuanzhang was so angry that he wished to kill Zhu Yujian in this Huagai Hall. He looked left and right, and saw Zhu Gaogui's imperial sword on the wall, leaving behind Zhu Yujian to rush and retrieve the sword. Chang. The sword sparkles, piercing the heart and mind. Emperor Zhu Yuanzhang's breath was full of fear, and he slowly walked up to Zhu Yujian, intending to directly kill him. Upon seeing this situation, Zhu Yujian did not struggle and stretched his neck, making a scene of being slaughtered. In Zhu Yujian's heart, he was in a daze at this moment. Seventeen years of the imperial era passed through his mind like a movie, but ultimately he couldn't find any brilliance. He was even somewhat grateful that dying under the sword of Taizu might be his own fate. Father cannot do it. Before Zhu Gaoqian could move, Zhu Di stopped in front of Zhu Yuanzhang and said, Father. Although Yu Jian's ability is a bit inferior, his heart is good. This is not the end of the matter. Besides, killing Zhu Yu Jian at this time can change the already deteriorating situation of the Chongzhen dynasty. Get out of the way. Zhu Yuanzhang had a dark face, obviously determined to pay attention. Zhu Di's advice had no effect. Helpless, Zhu Di could only hint at Zhu Gaoqian with his eyes and frequently gestured. Grandfather, the downfall of the Ming dynasty has been a long dot standing ailment. Zhu Yujian's abilities are somewhat inferior, but he has never learned imperial techniques. Being able to achieve this level is already his greatest ability, said Zhu Gaoqian, who had planned to stop him and move forward. Zhu Yujian saw that Zhu Di and Zhu Gaoqian were pleading with him, especially when Zhu Gaoqian claimed that he had not systematically studied imperial methods and affirmed himself, tears welled up. He choked up and kowtowed to the three of them, saying, Chengzu and Tian Chengzu, dying under the sword of Taizu is the glory of our grandchildren. You two plead for my mercy, and Yu Jian is immensely grateful. Shut up. Zhu Gaogui turned back with a cold and piercing gaze, penetrating his heart. Seeing this gaze, Zhu Yujian was stunned. He had never seen such a terrifying aura before. Even on Taizu I have never seen it either. Upon seeing Zhu Yujian calm down, Zhu Gaogui turned around and his heart-wrenching gaze had disappeared, replaced by a warm smile. Grandpa Huang, there is an emperor chat group right now. What problem can't be solved? At this point, Zhu Gaogui's expression was proud, and his words were full of confidence. They are just a few adventurers, the Tartars who like to jump around. I have confidence in annihilating them all, my grandson. Until then, Zhu Yuanzhang, whose brain was dominated by anger, finally calmed down and remembered what Zhu Gaoqian had said. Bang bang. As the imperial sword landed, Zhu Yuanzhang murmured, Yes, we still have this emperor chat group. There is still room for redemption. Halfway through, Zhu Yuanzhang glared at Zhu Di and said, Get out of here, don't wander in front of us. Zhu Di dodged the conversation, 
while Zhu Yuanzhang smiled and grabbed Zhu Gaoqian's arm, saying, It's really a great blessing to have you in the old Zhu family. Hearing this, Zhu Di could not help but secretly roast, Son or grandson, where should I go to say the courtesy? When roast, Zhu Di completely forgot that he didn't like Zhu Gaoqi, but he didn't love Zhu Zhangji, and called him good son. P.S. Seeking flowers, seeking evaluations, seeking monthly tickets I've deducted the heads from the big shots.